that actually have if you just feel the other emotion. And go ahead, open your eyes, buddy. Go ahead, open your eyes. Stand up. Stand up. Now let me ask you both one question, okay? Is depression the best way to feel to get what you want? No, definitely not. So what do you feel instead? Uh, I feel, you know, if I would be more free, then that would be the way to go. Okay, and how do you feel? Uh, I feel pretty good, yeah. Pretty good. All right, and you, how do you feel? I feel a little more relaxed. A little more relaxed, yeah. Do you still feel depressed? Do you think he had a change? <clears throat> Maybe a little bit. He had a bigger change, but did they really have a big change? I don't think so. I actually know so. I, I know for a fact not. As a matter of fact, they'll leave here and they'll go back in their own pattern. Now you might say, Marcel, it's a suggestion you're giving them. No, it's not. I could see it. I could see it. Because their brain doesn't believe it. That just goes to show you how rewarded, right? By the way, when I changed this hat, what did I change? His identity. His identity. I changed his identity. But now he's back in the other identity. Do whatever you want. Right? There you go. See? <laughs> okay. So here, here's a really, really prime example of why I, I brought these two on stage. I'm actually going to show you guys exactly why. Exactly why they're depressed. What do you focus on? What, are, what does your future look like? Tell me. My future? Mm -hmm. Is being successful. Yeah? Yeah. And that makes you depressed? Not necessarily, but there is parts of me that don't believe in that. And the parts of you that don't believe in it, listen to what he's focused on, make you feel what? Hopeless, despair. Hopeless, despair, sadness, depression, right? And how about you? What do you focus on? Uh, focus on like that negative voice in my head, and then I start getting attached to that. And, and what are you seeing? Uh -huh. So he's talking about a visual. He's talking about an auditory experience. So they're both telling me, right, if I were to communicate to him, to help him out of this, I would help him change the voice in his head. I would help him change the image he sees, right, about the future. And then he gives himself the words, hope, despair, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So here's the thing. I'm going to help you guys. But in order to help you guys, I'm also going to relate back to the room. So there are three things that control our state. Now, I'm going to show you how easy it is to change both of them. Both of you, look at each other's eyes. Each other? Yeah, just stare into each other's eyes like this. All right. Look into each other's eyes. Now, both of you share something in common, okay? You're both human beings. You've both been through a lot of shit in your life, right? But I want you to start to see something. I want you to see the other person. I want you to see the pain they've been through. And the problem with the pain is you, you never learn how to use that pain to tap into your power. You never learn how to turn that sadness into power, into strength, into hope. Focus on nothing other than each other. Try and understand the pain he's been through. Try and see the pain he's been through. For a moment, don't think about what you've been through, but think about what he's been through. Think about what he's been through. Now, you know this. If you continue down this path, will you ever, if they continue down this path, will they ever reach their goal? You have an opportunity right now. And the opportunity you have is to do things for them. And what that means is, this is a random human being that you just met right now. You have the opportunity right now to become better, to break free from this pattern. So the two of you no longer live life feeling this way. But it has to be done at the same time for it to work. It has to be done from both of you. You have to now think about how you are going to inspire him and how you are going to inspire him by getting out of this state. And if you don't, because you don't actually care, you only care about yourself. And I know that's not you. Do you feel different? Do you see the part of you that you want to let go of in the other person? Mm -hmm. Can you see how the other person has actually has a lot more potential than they might believe they have? Yeah. Can you see how they see it in you? 
Now both of you close your eyes. Now what do you need to see in yourself in order to overcome this feeling? Don't say it out loud, just think about it. Take a deep breath. And in a moment, I want you guys to get in a peak state, but you're the only two who can get in a peak state in the entire room. And when you fucking do, you're going to let this fucking thing go and you're going to say, what the fuck was I doing? Because you're not that person. That's not you. Nod your head when you're ready. Nod your head when you're ready. Good. Open your eyes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, take a deep breath. And I want you guys to fucking leave the room. Everyone stand up and you guys are going to do it together. You guys are going to inspire the entire fucking room because there's other people in, your fucking, in the fucking room that are feeling what you guys are feeling. But you're going to show them that this is no longer the way we're going to go. Can we, can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. Yes. All right. So I want you guys to count to three together. Inspire them and let's get in the fucking peak state. And anyone else in the room who's struggling with it can see how easy it is to overcome this. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. Let's go. Count. One. Two. One. Two, Let's go! Give me more! Jump! 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 jump. jump. Oh, oh. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Now, one more time. How are you feeling? Much better. Much better. Okay. Let me ask you. You still depressed? Okay. Guys, I want to point something out. How much of a, would you say his peak state was a peak state? No. Fuck no. You were closer. Are you still depressed? Well. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> okay, listen. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make it fucking easy. You have two options. Both of you have two options, all right? You could stay this way, which you don't want to, or you can get out of the fucking pattern, which is really hard to do, right? It's hard to break out of a pattern. Your brain says, this has been working my whole life. I don't want to change it. Or you break out of the pattern right now, you have the opportunity. And when you break out of it, you don't go back in it. You don't fucking go back in it. The second you feel yourself going back in it, this is your way out. All right? Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yes. All right. This time, pr project your voice. Go, eh. 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 Louder, louder. Eh. Eh. Louder. Eh. Louder. Eh. Woo! Oh, do it again, do it again, do it again. Hey! Louder. Try and try. Okay, you guys are going to be in a competition here. You're going to lose your voice, but you're going to fucking break out of this town, right? You go, and then he's going to go louder, and you guys have to go back and forth. Go. Hey! Go. Hey! No, go louder. Hey! Louder, from here. From here. Hey! Put your hands up, and now do it. Hey! Now go. Hey! 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 Go. <laughs> hey! All right, now count to three like that. All right, if they can't fucking hear you guys, it's going to be like one, two, three, like that. All right, not now, but you guys are going to do it like that. Feel the fucking power. You want fucking power? You're about to influence an entire fucking room. You want power? You want to see what it's like? This is it. You're about to change a bunch of people. You ready? Is about to see how powerful you really are? Because I promise you, you'll be like, hey, guys, get a piece. <laughs> no power there, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Yes. yes. All right. So we're going to count to three. Guys, give it your fucking all because they're going to feed off of you. Are we ready? Yes. yes. Are we ready? Yes. Let's go. Count. Go. One, One two, three. three. Yes. Let's go. You guys see a fucking difference? Yeah. You feel this? All right. Yeah, just pussy bitch. Okay, he's pussy boy, bitch boy. All right. What's his name? Call him. Talk to him. Tell him he's a bitch. Tell him he's a bitch. He's a bitch. What? What? He knows you what? There's a need that's being met. What do you get in your dress? Love? Power? You said power? What does power give you? What do you want to call your guy? Um, my shelf, I guess. Your shelf? Shelf. Fake shelf? So fake self or fake? Yeah, it could be. Whatever what do you want to call it. Yeah, fake self. All right. Tom will go fuck himself. 
Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say it again. Uh, go fuck yourself, they show. Yeah. Okay, so so what do we see here? I just guess it's such a contrast. Right? They do the same exact fucking thing. Same thing. Same issue. One person's getting the, the breakthrough and the other one's not. I just want to point something out. There's a fucking difference. When someone wants the change and they're ready, they get it. Okay? What do you call it? Are you there? Are you depressed? No. You sure? Try and feel depressed. Come on. <laughs> well, all right, good. Close your eyes. Now ask yourself, if you go down this path of feeling the way you're feeling now versus staying depressed, what's your life going to look like in the future? It's going to be very bitter. Yep. And now let's say you stay the way you are on stage. How's it going to look? Very free. What do you want? And honest. What do you want? I want it to be honest. And so free. who are you? Who are you? I'm this free version of myself, I guess. You guess? Not the shelf. You sure? Or you guess? <laughs> I, I feel it. I know it. Okay. And what happens if your brain wants to go back? If it wants to go back? What do you do? Do you take control? I have to tell it to go fuck itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good. Give him a round of applause, guys. Give him a seat. Let me ask you. I'm going to give you an opportunity here, okay? If you want to change, I'm going to help you change. If you don't want to change, you guys can have a seat, by the way. If you want to change, I'll help you. But you, you have to want it. Do you want it? Don't lie to me. I want change. No. Do you want to change? I want the change. What's the change you want? Tell me what the change is. I want to break out of my pattern. Okay, which pattern? Well, there is multiple. So. No, which pattern do you want to break out of? All the patterns you're talking about stem from one feeling. What's the fucking feeling you want to break out of? Quick. Come on. Come on. I guess hopelessness. Hopelessness. Of what? Powerlessness. Yeah, why do you feel powerless? Because of past experiences. No, because of your perception of past experiences. But what are they? What do you believe? Be honest. There's parts of me that don't believe that I'll get the success that I say I want. Okay. Yeah. So they feel powerless. Okay. And when you feel powerless, what are you losing? What am I losing? Yeah, what do you lose? When you have no power, what do you lose? I feel I can't get the success I want. But what do you lose? If you were to be successful, what do you get? What feelings does that give you? Quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. If you had all the success in the world, what does that give you? Go, go, Happiness, go, go. Fulfillment. Happiness, fulfillment, what else? Power. Uh huh. What else? Sit. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine your life. You never have happiness. You never have fulfillment. You never have power if you stay this way. You have two options now. You have an option to change. And the option to change is you let go of these fucking feelings. You let go of the hopelessness. You look within. You find out how fucking strong you are. And by being this fucking strong, you actually find out how happy you really are on the inside. You find you have unlimited happiness. You have unlimited power. You have unlimited freedom. You can literally feel fulfilled like that. But it's a choice. Do you want to make that happen right now? Imagine what that version of you looks like. Imagine you're standing in front of them. They're right there. They're standing over you. You're on this chair. You float out of your body. You're looking at the version of you in front of that chair. You're looking at that version of you, and that version of you is so fucking happy and so fucking powerful, and they're fulfilled, and they don't even recognize the version of you on the chair. Look at that version of you. What do they have? Do they think this way? Do they go into this pattern? If the answer to that is no, I want you to take a deep fucking breath. I want you to fucking stand up, and I want you to realize that you're going to fucking let out a scream because you are not weak. I am not weak. Say it. I am not weak. So what are you? I am powerful. Say it. I am Say powerful. It. I am powerful. Say it. I am powerful. Show us. Say it. I am powerful. Say it. I am powerful. So what is that? Who is that? My past self. Do you want to be that way anymore? Will you ever be that way anymore? No. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Tell them. Do you guys believe him? Tell them. Tell them. See if you believe it. Back to that anymore. You promise. Make a promise to yourself, to your future self. 
I promise. Do you want kids one day? No. <laughs> you don't? What do you want? Shit. No, I'm kidding. What do you want? What do I want? I don't know. Are you like vegan? What's that? Are you vegan? No. Okay. So you want girlfriends, boyfriends, in, in between? I want a friend. Okay. So how does that start? You got to be a friend to yourself, right? Yes. All right. And guess what? How many people are in this room? A lot. Now, how many people are willing to be his friend? Raise your hand. The whole fucking room. You just said that. And look at how much power you, you just literally had the power. Those words literally made you at least 100 friends if you want. Can you see your power? Yeah. Can you see your power? I can see it. Guys, doesn't he look better when he's not depressed? Yes. Yeah? Doesn't he look fucking better? Right? Can you feel that? There we go. There we go. We're friends too, you know? If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't have you on stage. Yeah. Thank you. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't tell you you got the stage, right? Does he look ready to you? Look, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to have you do, okay? I'm going to give you homework because I do want to move on in the seminar, but I'm going to give you homework. Okay. You ready? All right. Homework is to set a couple goals. <laughs> and it's not about money. It's about feeling good. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to do it. If you loved yourself, what would you do differently? Would you go to the gym? Yes. Do you go to the gym now? Yes. Good. What else would you do differently? What words would you tell yourself? Say I'm powerful? Say I'm happy? Would you believe it? Yes. Yeah? Good. That's it? All right. Thank you so much. Amazing. Well, I'll put it to you this way. Here, before you get off the stage. Do you believe you changed? Yes. Do you? This experience is definitely... Yeah? An amazing experience, yeah. But you're not just saying that, because I want you to be honest. No, I'm honest. Yeah? Yeah. What changed? That, like, the perception after all of this, like, gave me a new... Paradigm. Paradigm, you could say. Yeah. Because, like, my whole life, I couldn't make one friend, but just ask and hear all of them raising their hands is, like, something else, so... And remember this, guys? I just want to point something out to you. What was he deleting? Oops. What was he deleting? Yeah, all, he was generalizing. He can never make friends. Deleting all the people that would be his friend. Distorting it, right? It's bullshit. And that's the whole point. It's literally his brain tricking him into thinking that his life isn't as good as it is. You're going to leave here with a bunch of friends, man. How long are you, are you living in Miami? I live in Fort Lauderdale. So you drove down here? Yeah. Yeah? So uh, I think you, I think right now, you should pick maybe three people in the room that you want to hang out with that just stood out to you. And uh, whoever wants to volunteer, and they're going to be your fucking friends. And you're going to treat them well. And they're going to treat you fucking well. All right? So can I get three people, just whoever stands up, whoever, whoever pops up in their mind that wants to be his friend right now? <laughs> Who do you want? Pick three people right now. My kids are already my friends. Okay, who else? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no friends. I can't make fucking friends. My ass. He's already your friend. What are you talking about? <laughs> Deleting that. See that? <laughs> All right. Well, they're friends now. All right. Hey. Okay. So go over there. Get their number. Give them a hug. And guys, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Takes a lot of bravery. Okay. So go. So just jump off. You're good. Okay. Guys, so here, here's a big thing. I used to have patterns of depression, which is why I hate it, because it's so far away from what needs to be the truth. Now, that's not the only pattern. Some people get mad. Some people get stressed. Some people get unhappy, which is bullshit. So I'm going to teach you guys something now that's a really, really easy trick to change the way you see emotion. So step two is strategy. We'll come back to that. Emotion is strategy, right? So there are three things that control our emotions. Our focus, our physiology, and our self-talk. Okay. Every emotion, without exception, has a certain physiology, a certain focus, and a certain self-talk. Now, if I were to mimic 
my physiology, my focus and my self-talk and go all in on it, you would feel exactly the way I feel. If I were to mimic his, I would, and I would go all in on it, I would feel exactly how he feels. Our brain's a computer. If you plug in the right words, the right physiology and the right focus, you get an emotion. And it's universal. So we follow this. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a partner. Okay? And you're going to write down two things. Positive states and negative states. You could be happy. Pick whatever positive state you want and pick whatever negative state you want. A lot of people in the room will be more familiar with negative states. A lot of people in the room will be more familiar with positive states. The reason I want you guys to do this with a partner is because the people who are familiar with positive states, you'll start to understand what they're focused on. What are they thinking? How are they feeling? What's their physiology? What's their self-talk? Right? We'll start to focus on these things, and then you can immediately model it. And I'll show you how after. But you need to become aware. So quick example. right? Who here is what says they're really happy? Taylor, come here for a sec. Come. All right. What do you focus on when you're really happy? Well, I sleep. I'm kidding. Why do I? Oh my god. Not again. All right. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I well, I tend to focus on like uh, the details of the world. Like it looks very beautiful. Okay. I focus on the beauty of the world. Beauty, okay. Light colors. Okay. And 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 what's your physiology? You're smiling. What are you? Like, yeah, like that. Like. No, do it. Just open my eyes and smile and. No, like, just do wow, it. Wow, and be fascinated. No, but but just do it. But that's not real. <laughs> okay, then I don't, I don't know. Just be real, be yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Just be myself. Yeah. So, All right, what, so when you see the world, what do you do? Just, I don't know, just look at it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no. But you're chilling, right? You're smiling, you're chilling? Yes. Like what? Like this? <laughs> like this. Like this is, this okay, is done. So you're smiling like this, whatever, right? That's physiology and your self-talk is what? Yes. Um, what do you tell yourself? Well, when I feel really positive, I'm like, wow, it's so... Um, well, I want to be specific. Uh, you woke up this morning, you look at the beach in Miami, what do you say? Oh, beautiful, amazing. Like uh, oh, like I saw the sun, the, uh, the sunrise the other day. I was like, wow, that's, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Like that, that's how you said it. It's exactly how you said well, it. Well, I, well, that's what I felt. I was how like, did you say it? I, I, say, I just said, wow. Really? Just wow, okay. I just said, wow, I said, wow. Like, and what did you focus on? What did you see? The beauty. Okay. Because I, I, I was seeing it in a, in a way I had never seen it before. Got it. Okay, so if I were to do that exact thing, I would feel exactly how he feels. Now, when we report with people, we match and mirror them, right? So when you say someone has bad vibes, it's because you're matching and mirroring a negative state and they're controlling the frame. But if you are in rapport with someone and they're in rapport with you and you're in a good mood and you're not fucking leaving that good mood, what's going to happen? They're going to match and mirror it. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so what I want everyone to do now is I want you to find a partner, all right? I want you to find a partner. I want you guys to do this exercise. I want you guys to write down a positive state and a negative state. And identify what it looks like. All right? Got it? All right. 10 minutes to do this. Give yourselves uh, 10 minutes. Give them a round of applause for coming up on stage. Thank you. And Thank you so much. Yeah, 10 minutes.
On, ah, fuck it, whatever. Okay. Guys, let's go have a seat. Okay. First of all, how many of us noticed, or at least became more familiar with what we're doing? Pretty interesting, right? When you have some insight as to what your brain is doing, it's a lot easier to change it. Now, here's a big problem I find people have. And this is really the biggest one. It's that they're not aware of what they're doing, right? You, they literally don't know. The, every time I go into a business and I coach a business or I coach an individual on why they're not getting the result they want, it's because they can't look at what they're doing. They're blind to it because they believe they're doing everything they can. They believe that the reason is something else. They believe it's something unrelated to actually to, to pretty much the reason why we're not getting results. So what is the number one factor I've seen in any result, one, it's action, but it's not just about taking massive action, right? We've heard this a lot. Take massive action, take massive action, take massive action. It's not about massive action. You know what it's about? It's about effective action. Effective action. Effective action is what? It's something that produces a massive result in a short amount of time. Like if I tell you, hey, you know, who here wants to be a, who wants to make $10 million, but it'll take you 200 years. Well, I don't think it's worth it. But if you say I'm gonna make $10 million in the next six months, well, that might sound effective to some people and to someone who's planning to make billions, it's not. But either way, effective action is action that produces massive results. Do we follow? Yes? Yeah. Great. Now, what's missing for most people? They can't be confident enough to be effective. So if you look at someone who's not as confident and they're gonna go for a close or a sale, what do they do? They beat around the bush. You ever call a business and you're like, hey, how much is it? Well, we'll get to that later. Or uh, I, I don't know. Well, you know, maybe talk to someone else. How are they going to sell your product? You can't be not confident. If you want to get results, confidence is number one. Because you ask me here, ask me, what do I charge to work one-on-one? -on -one? one million dollars a year. Really? Yeah, that's what I charge. Right? You get uh, huh? No, <laughs> I don't do payment plans. <laughs> yeah, I do a seven-year payment plan. No, I'm kidding. Right? But the point is, is you want to be confident. If you're asking somebody out, if you're confident, what does it sound like? Hey, cool. Dinner, Thursday, 8 p.m. I'll pick you up. If you're not confident. Like, yeah, maybe we could be friends. I'll invite you to this photo shoot. And then from this photo shoot, we'll, we'll go here. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> right? Is that effective action? Absolutely not. If you want results, you have to be effective. Most people just do shit that wastes time. It's like, here, let me go learn this new skill. You go on YouTube, you master this really difficult skill to say that you could fucking do it, and then nothing happens. You still don't make any more money. You get better and better and better, and you get less and less clients because you're not actually doing anything. Right? Every time you're not making progress, you're actually doing the opposite because you're getting less and less time to be able to make the progress. I think success is a compounding effect. I think you hit a certain level of success and it grows and it grows and it grows exponentially. So every year that I waste not actually taking effective action is years or, or really a fuckload of results that I'm missing out on. Because as you build up your network, you build up your confidence, you build up your, your wealth, you build up the skills necessary to do these things. Success happens faster. Right? I've done more in the last, let's say two months than I, I've done in the beginning or even three or four years of my business. 
Why? <laughs> because that's how success works. So when you're not effective, you get less results. And what's really the difference? Yeah, I got systems down and I kind of figured out the strategy and fine. But what really is the difference? I got more comfortable, more confident with a shortcut. I realized, oh, I could just do this and this to get this result rather than having to do all these extra steps. And I already thought I was leaner and doing less than everybody else because I, I was. But I still wasn't doing what I'm doing now. What I'm doing now is pretty much the most cutthroat, leanest method to get the result I'm looking for. Right? And that's how I am in my style of teaching. That's how I am in my style of actually helping people make a change. So what is the thought process behind effective action? Well, it's super simple. Most people, for example, with money, if you want to make more money, who here wants to make more money? If you want to make more money, you have to be willing to let go of the money you have. Because if I am not willing to let go of the money I have, what does that mean? I don't believe what? I believe I'm going to make more. Similarly, if I believe I'm going to make a lot of money, am I going to be willing to spend the money? Of course. But abundance, what is abundance? Abundance is a belief, a core belief, that you have an unlimited amount of whatever it is that you want. You have an abundance of it. You're not in scarcity. But there's a hierarchy, right? There's actually a psychology in our DNA. And this is why you'll understand why I think positive states are so important. It's in our very DNA to hold on to what we have if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy emotionally. So if I believe I'm not good enough, if I believe I'm not confident, if I believe I just am not the best version of me, that means I'm below someone else. If I believe I'm below someone else, then I'm not going to make money. I'm not going to spend money. I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to be in selfish states. I'm going to be focused on me. What's wrong with me? What's up with me? What's going on with me? When you immediately get into an empathetic state, right, where you're taking care of others, where you're focused on helping people, where you're focused on making a difference, you automatically go into abundance because your brain is now tricked to believe that you are the leader of the tribe. So I always tell people the highest form of motivation is not what house or car you're going to get, right? I did walk around here and I saw some of you guys writing down your goals. How many of you guys wrote down a phone call to your friends or parents hanging out with them? How many of you guys wrote down, I'm going to retire my parents. That's part of my monetary goal. I'm going to start a charity. I'm going to pay something. Something that drives you, right? I could say start a charity, but that doesn't do anything for you because you're not seeing it. It's not something that you're actually getting a, you know, a result from. They don't do that. But something that means, like something that touches your heart, that's going to drive more motivation. The highest forms of motivation come from giving to others. If you can't give, it's because you don't believe you're going to get. And it's because you don't believe you are enough. When I started making more money was when my dogs died. I had two dogs. I'm not going to say the whole story, but just summarize it. I had two dogs. They both got ran over on the same day. My parents were extremely upset. I was extremely upset. And I said, well, I'm going to do something about this, right? So as I'm sitting there and I'm asking myself, why are these things happening to me? I did feel hopeless. I felt stuck. I felt miserable. I'm fucking crying. I feel more pain than I've ever felt in my life. I'm looking at my dog's dead bodies, right? I'm literally over them. I'm kissing them. I'm petting them. I'm like, what? Like, I'm just hoping maybe one of them will start wagging their tail again. And they're not. They're dead. And when I snapped out of that state was the moment I started focusing not on the fact that I won't have my dogs around anymore and how upset I am. But I started focusing. I hear my mom literally like, like just like constantly listening to her crying through the front door. I'm constantly hearing her crying. And my brain said, how can I make her life better? How can I make my dad's life easier? What can I do for them right now? And at the time, they were struggling financially. And the reason I realized I couldn't ask for more money. At the time, I struggled asking for money. I, I couldn't ask for more than $350 at most uh, from a client. I'd finish a session and I would cross my fingers. Please pay me. Please pay me. Please pay me. Right? At the time. And in a moment, in an instant, that went away. I was able to ask for money because now I was doing it for them. Right? How many people here would come up with an extra 50, 60, even $70,000 in the next, let's say, three weeks if you knew your life or someone you really loved about, loves, loved, life depended on it? Who here would come up with that extra $60,000, $70,000? If you, someone you loved, someone you really cared about, so life depended on it. So what does that mean? Everyone, it's 100% of the room that raised their hand. What does it mean? It means that it's not that you can't do it. It's that you don't have enough motivation to go get it done. Everyone would find a way if there was enough of a reason to do it. 
Which means the problem isn't that you can't. It's that you don't have the will or the right mindset to make it happen. Do we follow? Yes. Do we follow? Yes. Okay, do we follow? Yes. Uh, what, people's hands not working or something? Yes. Everyone put your hands up. Everyone. Everyone. Okay, put your hands down. Put your hands up. Put your hands down. Put your hands up. Okay, do we follow? Yes. Thank you. All right? So if you want to actually go to the next level in any area, can't be for you. I lost 24 pounds in one month when I was really fat and I was young because I was in love with some girl. I'm like, I'm going to do this for her, <laughs> right? Lost the weight. Like, and that's an extreme amount to lose in a month. Every single time I've ever, ever done something big, something that I could never expect that I would get done, it was because there was someone else involved, either my friends or my family, where I had to make it happen. If you could find a reason beyond yourself to get these things done, you'll get crazy results. So earlier, I asked you guys to get in a peak state. Remember? When we get in a peak state, how did we feel? Felt good, right? So I could see the room's a little bit tired. We had a break, you know, all this other stuff. So I'm going to stand up. We're going to get back into peak state. And then we're going to double down. I'm going to need you guys. I really, guys, we're going to push through. All right? Everyone's going to get laser focused. And I promise you these next few hours are going to change your fucking lives. All right? They're going to go by in an instant. We ready? Yeah. Okay, before we get into peak state, though, I'd like to do something. Uh, can we, J Ibrahim, are you there? Yeah, he's there. Can you play Tessa? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hypnotize the room temporarily for a few minutes. But I want to do it with your eyes open. So you're not really going into a deep trance or anything. You're just going to kind of stand there with your eyes closed and, you know, keep you in your balance, standing up straight. You're not going to fall, none of that. You're just literally just going to focus on my voice. All right? It's going to feel like a guided meditation. I won't even use the word sleep. All right? So I'm going to close your eyes for a second. Take a deep breath through your nose. Lower a little bit. There. One more time. Take a deep breath through your nose. I want you to just focus on the sound of my voice. Now remember, I cannot do this for you. Your eyes closed now. With your eyes closed, I want you to focus on the sound of my voice. I want you to draw your attention to your breath. Notice what it feels like to be alive. Every breath in. You're breathing life into your cells, into your body. Now I want you to imagine yourself on a white sandy beach, turquoise water, blue skies. And as you feel the sun on your skin, you see a little kid at the end of this beach. And as you start to walk on this sand, and you feel how soft and warm it is, you notice there's just you and this kid. And the closer you get to this kid, the more familiar they start to look. And as you look at this kid, you can see pain in their eyes. You see tears. I want you to tell them how much you love them. Tell them how amazing they are, how powerful they are, how smart they are. And as you tell them everything they need to hear, you notice they start to smile. And before you know it, they start to grow up. And right before your very eyes, you're staring at the best version of yourself, an adult, a powerful individual, someone who is molded to be limitless, someone who is molded to be unstoppable. Look into their eyes. Notice how much they love themselves how much they love the world, how they're inspired to do things for others, how they realize they have unlimited potential. 
I want you to take a deep breath now and I want you to merge with this person. Feel what it's like to become one with this person. Notice how they think, how they feel, how they move, how they breathe. Feel that moving through you now. Now, I want you to go back to this beach being the best version of you, being who you always have been. And I want you to see this really bright light. It's almost like a ball. And what that is, is it's love, it's power, it's everything. Notice how dense it is. I want you to move towards it, not yet, but in a moment. You're going to let that into your heart. You're going to let that into your soul. And just start to see how powerful it is. You can feel the warmth of that radiating towards you. And just ask yourself in a moment, when you merge with this, how much unconditional love you're going to let into your soul. Go ahead and take a deep breath now. And bring it into you. Bring it into your heart. And feel that now. Feel it flowing through you. Feel what it's like to love yourself. To have power. You are unstoppable. You are limitless. You are happy. You are loved. You are fulfilled. You are successful. I want you to feel that in every bone, muscle, and fiber of your body. In every part of your being, I want you to believe that. Now take a deep breath. Become one with this. Go ahead and open your eyes now. How are you guys feeling? Yeah. Are we ready to change our lives now? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Who wants to make more money? Say yes. Yeah. Who wants to change their fucking lives? Say yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. One, two, three, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. That wasn't loud enough. I know there's more. I want you guys to bring it out of you. I'm going to count to three, but fucking put your heart and soul into this. Feel it. Guys, tap in. Let go. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Louder. Louder. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Good. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. How's everybody feeling? Good. When does change happen? When does it happen? Right now, I want you guys to change your paradigm. I want you to see things differently. I want you guys to take advantage of every fucking opportunity because there's only so many. And there's so much time. Time is our most valuable resource. And it hurts me to see people wasting their time. If you had two minutes left to live, and you're on your deathbed, you're surrounded by the people you love, how much would you give for an extra 60 seconds with them? Or if it was them on their deathbed, how much would you give for just 60 more seconds? Anything. You see, people value time when it's gone. Value it while you have it. Value your time while it's here. Because time is all you have. It is the most precious resource in the world. Money, can we make more of it? Yeah. Can we get more time? Whatever time we have is the time we have. And if you don't appreciate it, you don't make the most out of it, you don't enjoy every moment, you're not going to live the way you want to live. You know, the most valuable lesson I've learned in my life, and it's a reoccurring pattern, it's a reoccurring lesson, is that time is so short. 
It's so short. You know, in high school, I've never shared this story at a seminar, but I'll share it here. I had a girlfriend. But before I did, I remember I was walking to class. I never get allergies. I mean, never. I never, ever get allergies. And I'm walking to class, and my nose is running. I'm sneezing. And I, I go, Chew. <laughs> someone goes, bless you. And I heard an accent. And I look. I make eye contact with this person for like half a second. And I stopped. And I look again, and I was in love. I just, I was like, literally, like, I fell in love the second I saw this, I saw her. And she was already walking away, and I walked to class, and I walk up to the front of the class, and I say, hey, does anyone know this new blonde girl who's in school, it's like a 4,000-person school, uh, who has an accent? And everyone's looking at me like, who the, what the fuck's wrong with you, you know? I'm like, that's going to be my girlfriend. I finish class, and my best friend Nima's in the back over there. And I tell him, I'm like, yo, bro, I, I saw this girl. She said, bless you to me. She's me and my girlfriend. And he's like, oh, I saw a girl too, <laughs> you know, and uh, ended up being her. But super funny. Anyways, I ended up dating her. It ends up being fucking amazing. But here's the catch. She was a foreign exchange student. So we had a set date for when the relationship was going to end. So every day we knew that come December 15th, that's it. I'm never going to see her again. She's never going to see me again. I had no money for gas. I remember I'd ask Nima for like five bucks here, five bucks there. I would put my car in neutral to go downhill, you know, like to save, to save gas, things like that. And, and my car was a piece of shit. It broke down so many fucking times. Anyways, so I remember it's like December 9th. I'm, I'm like, we, like, if we fight, we make up right away. But the reason this relationship was so magical was because we were so in the moment the whole time because we knew that it was going to end, right? But let me ask you guys a question. What relationship won't end? Everything ends. Every relationship always ends. But it's not in your face, so you're not thinking about it. So December 13th comes along. Her dad gives her a call. Surprise. <laughs> you have another month. So now we have till January 15th. So we get really fucking close to each other in this last month. And this is probably the most pain I've ever felt in my life. So January 15th comes along. She slept over. I wake up. I tried to stay up all night because I wanted to you know, have time with her, but it didn't work out like that. And keep in mind, like everything has been like, it was my first time going like to Disneyland with a girl, my first time going to a movie theater with the girls, like my first time doing all these things. So all these new memories are forming and I'm feeling so connected to her, right? I'm, I'm madly in love with this girl and she has to go to the airport. So I'm obviously going to take her to the airport. I'm on the way to the airport and we're listening to all the songs that we had, all our memories. And I'm convincing myself like, so it's going to be fine. You know, when I'm done, I'll just hang out with another girl later today. <laughs> It'll be fine. We get to the airport. We're there like three hours early. We sit down. We're talking. We're laughing. And now it's two hours until she has to leave. And I'm looking at the time. And now you're starting to feel like, fuck, like, wait, we don't have that much time. And then you look at the time again, and it's one hour. And now I have one hour left with her. And I'm starting to think about all the memories I had. And I'm like, damn. I'm probably never going to see her again. There's no way I can buy her a plane ticket. I don't have the money. I have nothing. She's not going to come back. She has school. I have school. And then we're 10 minutes away. So now I have 10 minutes left with this girl. Now imagine being completely in love with someone, like the pinnacle of your love. You're, you've never been this in love. It just has grown to the max that it could be. And you have 10 minutes left with them. And you know you're never going to see them. They might as well be dead at that point, right? You know you're never going to see them again. I look at my clock. She has two minutes left. And I tell her, hey, you know, you got to go. So the, in Terminal 4, LAX, into uh, TSA, there's an entry by the entry on the right because that's where we thought she had to go. So I, I stand up. I'm trying not to cry. I'm like in tears. And she's like, no, I don't want to go. Don't let me go. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's obviously what I, I don't want to let you go, you know, <laughs> but you have to go. So I'm forcing her to kind of come up. And she hands the person at the front. Uh, the boarding pass, and they're like, no, it's on the other side. So the moment before she handed that ticket over, I felt like I was having a fucking heart attack. I'm like, oh my God, this is the last 10 seconds I have with this girl. And then we had another minute. And now I'm walking with her, which felt like forever, it felt like an eternity, it was maybe 40 seconds from this side of the airport terminal to that side of the airport terminal. And I'm holding her hand, I'm trying to memorize her face, her smell, her jacket, her clothes. I'm trying to memorize everything. I'm trying to memorize this moment because I know it's probably the last moment I have with her. We get there and they're like, yeah, this is where it is. So I give her one last hug, one last kiss. And I say bye to her in our hands, kind of like a movie, like left like this. As she going up the escalator, I blew her a kiss. She caught the kiss. And I, I couldn't handle it. I was about to fucking explode from tears. So I come out 
and I'm just crying. Like I'm crying my eyes out. I feel horrible. It was the worst pain I ever felt in my life. Like I'm like, dude, if I were to lose a limb, I'd rather lose a limb than have this feeling. It took me like a couple hours to finally find my car, like a couple hours, which is ridiculous. Literally, I finally get in the car. I turn it on. The last song playing is the first song that I had with her. And then I go to put my hand on the chair where she was always sitting. She's not there, right? So it was just constantly, like constantly reminding me of how much it hurts, right? And then you fast forward, right? I'm 17 there, whatever. It took me like two and a half years to get over it. And then you fast forward and had three dogs, October 1st, one of them dies, January 27th, the next two die, right? It's three months later. And, and it just constantly like, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. But it's all, all relating to time, right? My dad's had nine heart surgeries. He's 72 years old, has type two diabetes, right? He's had a heart attack before. My mom is 62. She smokes three packs of cigarettes a day. And every theme in my life has been, hey, you know what? Life is short. Time is really, really, really valuable. And this is the message I'd like to share with you because I, I obviously could dive deeper into the stories and I can make it a lot more emotional, but that's not the point here. I don't want to waste time. <laughs> the point here is that if you can't value time, you can't value your future. You can't value your success. You can't value taking action. You can't value the moment because in the moment is where success happens. In the moment is where confidence is created. In the moment is where your destiny is shaped. Can anyone here think about a moment in their lives where they made a decision to leave at the right time, the right place, and either it ended up being a car accident or something bad, or ended up being a really positive experience where they wouldn't have met someone or seen someone or interacted with someone that's now in their life, right? It was a moment you decided to leave that just happened to have perfect timing to get to a certain place, and there you go, you met someone. And there's only so many moments like this in life. And I, I look at life, and I think life is almost lucky. I think it's lucky because there are so many serendipitous moments where you interact with someone and you connect with someone and it imprints, that moment will imprint itself on your life forever. I remember I was actually, this is a time where, I, it was like a year and a half ago, time when my business was really struggling. Like it was right like COVID, you know, and I, I was really trying to figure out how I can go from having an in-person business to online. And I was trying to figure out the transition and I had another $500, still had left in cash, you know, and rent was due in two days. And, you know, I was just like, damn, uh, I'm really stressed out and I have to pay my employees. Their fucking families rely on it, you know, and, and I'm just like, wow, $500 left in cash. It's in my pocket. And ironically, I'm driving my Aston Martin. <laughs> I'm driving my Aston Martin. I, I pull into the gas station and I'm like, I'm going to go fill it up. And I go to fill it up and I come out and there's this old lady. She's like 65 years old and it's maybe 8 a.m. in the morning. She has one sock <laughs> on her foot. She's older. She doesn't look like she's done drugs or anything like that. She just looks like she's older and she's eating ice cream. And I just looked at her and I looked at the money I had in my pocket. And I said, honestly, I, I want to give to her. And it, to this moment, I, I was looking at her. I'm like, how can someone who's old like that, where are her kids? Where's her family? Where, who is not, why is someone not taking care of this person? And I spoke to her and I said, Hey, good morning. How's the ice cream? And she's like, it's good. And she's like, you want one and pulls it out of a box. And she went off from the ice cream. And I said, no, I'm okay. But and I went to give her $500. I gave her the $500 and she's just crying. She's like, wow, that's the sweetest thing anyone's ever done for me. You know, people ignore me as if I don't exist. And it's not that I say, hey, go give money to every homeless person you see. But I gave her the money and I felt really good. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I barely have money for gas now. Like I put 20 bucks in my gas tank and that was it. I didn't even fill up my tank. And I'm driving home. As I'm driving home, I get a fucking text on Instagram from someone. He's like, hey, do you, do you work one-on-one? -on -one? I'm like, yeah. Ended up being my highest paying client to date. I swear it was like maybe three or four minutes later. And I'm like, would that have happened anyways? I don't know. I really don't know. But I do know that it was like this moment where I just said, fuck it. You know, I can always make more money. Doesn't matter. But the moment where I just said, I'm going to let go of it. It came back to me a thousandfold. Like really. It, it was, it, and, and that moment I think cemented a belief in my mind. And the belief was, no matter what, I'm always going to be okay. And I, I have to be able to change people's lives. I have to give back. And I said, I have to actually make sure I never get into this situation again so I can be able to help more people without having to think twice about it, right? And now I'd like to encourage you guys to ask yourselves a question. If you had the opportunity to make way more in your life, to be way more in your life, would you seize it? Now, before you answer that question, I want you to think again. Because the truth is, the opportunity is there all the fucking time. It's there every moment of every day. 
And there's a possibility that you're letting all these moments slip by. And that's what life is. If you think back in your life and you think about all the memories, it's not, you're not thinking about every day, you're thinking about every moment. You're thinking about a few moments that add up to what you have become now, right? I think of a few key moments in my life that have had a positive and negative impact on me that have led to this moment right here. So what that means is all these memories you're making in your day to day usually are just <coughs> going to be gone. You're not going to remember them. And we're always focused on what will be, what was. But what, what, what about what's happening now? So if you really want to value time, look at life this way. If you knew you had 24 hours and it's the end of the world, what would be the first thing you'd want to do besides freak out? Who would you want to spend it with? What would you want to tell them? Is there anyone you're fighting with right now? Does, does that fight even fucking matter anymore? Does that grudge matter anymore? Ego goes out the window. When ego goes out the window, confidence rises. Confidence is the opposite of ego. Ego is a compensation for it, right? Here is someone with ego. Here is someone with confidence. Ego is the air between the water and the top of the bottle. A confident person's full. So this is going to pretend like it's a full water bottle. But it's not. This is a full water bottle. This is someone who has confidence. When you value time, confidence goes up. You're hacking the brain. Because what kind of person values time? Someone at the top of the hierarchy. Someone with status. Someone with value. Someone with confidence. If you value time, you value your interactions with people. You value giving to people. You value the moment. And in the moment is when you create your destiny. There are so many times I wanted to stay in bed. I didn't want to go out. I wanted to go to sleep, but I said I have to leave. And I thought about my parents. I thought about my friends. I thought about my future. I thought about anyone I would ever speak to. And I went out. And it, out of 10 times, nine of them, nothing happened. And you go on, the, you're fucking tired. You want to stay in, you want to sleep, and you say, I'm going to go out anyways. And then the 10th time, nothing happens. 11th time, nothing happens. Finally, the 30th time, you meet someone. And that someone changes your life. And it doesn't change your life that night. It changes your life in a year. When you meet him again and they introduce you to someone over dinner. And then that someone brings you here to speak on this stage. That's, that's what happened. How did I meet Owen? I met my friend Greg. I met Greg, and then Greg invited me to dinner a year and a half later, and Owen was at dinner. And I had one opportunity at that dinner to make something happen. And I decided at that dinner, I'm going to do a seminar. I didn't have anyone come to the seminar. I only had two seminars prior to that. The last time I did it was a year and a half before. I said, Owen, why don't you come speak at my seminar? I had no one coming. I said, sure. I'll come. I'm like, cool, now I need to bring people to the seminar. I said, how many people are coming? I'm like, I don't know, 30 to 40? How am I going to get 30 to 40 people in my seminar? I've never fucking done this before. At least a paid seminar, right? I told him it's a paid seminar. So I hit up my friend Tyler. He's like, other Tyler. <laughs> and he's like, hey, let's fly to Vegas. There's an event happening in Vegas. I saw you there, by the way, with Nick, remember? So we fly to that event, and I'm just selling everyone at this event. Come to my event. I sneak into the event. I use the only money I have for a one-way ticket. It was like $130 in my account. I use the only money I have to pay for the BOA dinner, <laughs> which is a steakhouse, and then the rest of my money to fly to Las Vegas. I have no idea where I'm sleeping that night. I have no fucking idea where I'm sleeping. I don't have a hotel room. I just go there with my fucking suitcase and my suit. I walk in. I finesse my way, get VIP tickets to this event. I'm like, well, fuck the VIP ticket. I put it away. And I see a speaker room. I walk into the speaker room. I start networking with the speakers. And one of the speakers has stage fright. I convince him, like, I'll get rid of your stage fright, but give me 15 minutes on stage. But someone went over for 15 minutes, so it took up my slot. But I would have had the opportunity to speak on that stage, right, if that didn't happen. But I continue talking to people, and I end up filling up most of my seminar from here, and then some people from Instagram. And anyways, I end up getting like 40 people to come to the seminar. And it was an amazing fucking seminar. It was my third ever seminar, amazing seminar. Owen comes, he was going to stay for an hour. Ended up staying for the whole two days, 12 hours a day. And after that, he invited me to come speak with him. And then all of a sudden, I sharpened my axe, and I got way better. And I got way better. I mean, like, imagine speaking three times in your whole life on three stages, and all of a sudden, you're getting 40 stages you get to speak on in like four months. For hours each time, hours and hours and hours, right? How much of a shortcut do you think that, that was for my career? Probably a decade, really. And then what? 
And I started to learn how it's done, how you fill the room, how you build this following, how you, how you create it, how you speak on stage, how you, how you do all this. And that was just one night going out. And then a year later, it paid off. Right? Every time you talk to someone, you plant a seed. Now, you don't know if the seed will ever sprout. You don't know if it'll ever turn into anything. You don't know if it might have made a difference for them, and maybe you'll never see what it did. But what I can tell you is every opportunity you take advantage of and you go all in on it, that's an opportunity that ends up changing your life. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about everything. Life is short. We have one life. If you looked at my life before, my life was not easy. It was not fucking easy. My life was not fucking easy. My friends call me. They're like, hey, come, up, come out with us to dinner. It's like a $10 dinner. Can't do it. I have to constantly watch my gas tank never go over a quarter tank. My car almost never worked. I have to say no to my friends because I'm like, whatever. I, I couldn't play sports sometimes because I couldn't afford to be on the sports team. Couldn't pay the $100 for the uniform or whatever. Had to wear shoes that were, were small on me and walk around. Every step hurts. It wasn't easy. I see my dad in and out of emergency rooms with, with fucking heart surgery after heart surgery. He can't work. My mom never really worked. So now she has to work and support us and take care of my dad. Now everything's fine. Ironically, my mom has a multi-million dollar business. My dad has a multi-million dollar business. I have a multi-million dollar business. So it kind of all worked out. But, you know, it's interesting how they were in a rut too. So I grew up super wealthy. They lost everything. And then finally, when I was old enough to understand, that's, that's how I grew up, right? After eight, nine, 10 years old, it wasn't easy anymore. And I, I'm happy about that because I've seen the contrast. I've been in both. And I can tell you this. What is the difference? The difference is actually taking advantage of opportunity. The difference is actually going for it. It's having no fear. Let me ask you guys this. Who here actually wants to learn the mindset that allows you to make a lot of money? The mindset I use from age 20 to 23 that has allowed me to absolutely transform my fucking life. Now, I don't care how much money you have because I'm going to make this super easy for you. I swear to God, I'll make it super easy for you. I'm having a seminar in Miami, ironically, right, in a month, April 29th, 30th, and May 1st. Who here would want to come to that seminar? It's called Limitless Wealth. And before you raise your hand, the seminar is all about three days. It's all about teaching you how to think your way through problems. I'll give you a quick example, okay? You set a goal. You're like, I want to make this much money. What's the first thought that pops up in most people's heads? How, right? Is that the thought popped up in your head? How? How am I going to do it? How do you overcome how? Well, I'll make something very simple, very, very logical, very simple. How many of you spend more than 30 seconds thinking about it? If you only spend 30 seconds thinking about how to solve a problem, how are you going to solve the problem? Most math problems take more than 30 seconds. You're telling me, creating your lifestyle, your future, you're only going to think about it for 30 seconds? How are you going to get the result? People are always like, Marcel, how? Well, step by step here. You do the math. How much money do you have to make per day? What am I selling? Is it a product or is it a service? Who can afford that? How many people do I need to buy that in order to get it? Okay, where do I find these people? How am I going to send a message to them? How am I going to reach out to them? How am I going to market to them? Do I know anyone who knows them? Can I collaborate with someone? How can I solve this problem easily? What's, what makes me different than them? How can I make my brand stronger than the other brand? Do I have to make it cheaper? Okay, if I make it cheaper, how do I increase profit margins? You ask all these questions, and now the pieces come together, and guess what happens? You made your goal. But most people stop at how. How? Well, I've never done it before. You're right, you haven't, but you will. And I'm going to show you how to think about it. Now, here's another example of this. At 20 years old, I set my mind to something. I said, okay, by the time I'm 25, and that's what this, this bracelet here means. I got this as a birthday present at 20. You can see it's not necessarily in the best condition. <laughs> so I wear it every day. I've worn it every fucking day. It, the numbers end on this little triangle pyramid thing, and that's 24. I said, by the time I'm 24, I'm going to be the biggest public speaker in the world. And I said that. I said, by the time before I turn 25, I'm going to be the biggest public speaker in the world. I turned 24 in three months. So I have pretty much 15 months, less, 14 months to get to my goal. Am I going to do it? Fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. But it took me this much time, right? Five years to get to this point where I could say with 100% confidence, I know I'll be there. But here's the question I have for all of you. What took me three years to master in my mind? What took me three more years to figure out in my business? What took me multiple clients, billionaires and multimillionaires getting crazy results? For example, I have a, a client, I'm not going to share their name, but their company was worth $30 million in December of 2020. I worked with them from December 2020 
to last year, right, December 2021, they went from a $30 million business to a $1 billion business in one year. They were growing 400% a year for 10 years, and they got to a $30 million valuation. What's 400% after 30? 4X, what is that? It's 120, right? Well, they went to 1 billion in the same time. The same time is going to pass. So I've done this seminar once before. I had another client who came to the seminar. His name's Alex. Came to the seminar last year when I did it. I actually did it December of 2020 when I knew a lot less. But now I know a lot more because I made a lot more. Now, December 2020, Alex comes. He just lost a $300,000 a month business that went under. He sabotaged it. His mindset fucked it. It was a great business. Fucked it up. Fast forward to now, he makes $1.5 million a month. And he started making that six months ago. How? His mindset. How many of us would agree that your mindset controls everything? Are you guys starting to see this pattern? Yes? How many of us would also agree that it's actually a lot easier to make money if you know what you're thinking about? Right? A lot of people, like Tony Robbins says, success is 80% psychology, 20% strategy. I would say it's almost 100% psychology because your psychology creates a strategy. Right? Most people are like, well, let me work on the mechanics. Let me work on how I'm going to do it. Let me work on how I'm going to get it done. Honestly, in the past, I would say yes, but things change. Why do they change? Because strategy is always changing. The life is changing. Marketing 40 years ago is not going to work today. Right? Marketing door-to-door mail. Who the fuck reads the mail? When's the last time you read the mail? <laughs> you don't. You read email. And you don't even read email that much anymore. Right? It's text messages. Text message open rates are over 80%. Email, maybe five, six on average. Right? So there's a lot of different strategies. Here's another thing. If you want to really create wealth in your life, you yourself have to change. So three options. Now, let me ask you this. Can everybody here, honest, is there anyone in here who can't even afford $350? Good. So everyone can say that they can afford at least $350. So here's the thing. The only reason you wouldn't want to come to this is because you can't watch it online or it's in person. There are three ticket options. There's a VIP ticket option, which is $2,500. It's a platinum ticket option, which is $1,000. And there's a general admission ticket, which is $350, which also works on Zoom. So you can watch that on Zoom. You can watch it in person. Now, the seminar is in Miami. It's April 29th, 30th, May 1st. It's a three-day event. It's 12 hours a day, almost, about 10 and a half hours, right? Now, if you look at that event, what I teach you in that event is everything that got me from point A The point B, that everything that got me from the beginning of my life where I didn't make shit to how I'm self-made. How did I do it? And I didn't do it through luck. I promise you I'm the unluckiest guy you've ever met. I I go on my Instagram, still only have 55,000 followers. I still haven't fucking gone viral. I still haven't blown up. still haven't become super famous, but I figured it out. I really did. I figured out how to take very little and how to make a lot. And a lot of people I see out there have so much more, and yet they get so much less. You have a lot more than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how to create it. So I'm going to show you how to think your way to wealth because you don't work your way to wealth. You don't pick up a shovel and make yourself money. You think your way to wealth. Would we agree with that? Say yes. yes. So how many people here would be interested in coming to that seminar and actually seeing me live for three days learning how to change your mindset to make money? Raise your hand if you're interested. Hi. I can't see it, guys. Raise it. Okay. If you're raising your hand, stand up. If you're raising your hand, stand up. I'll come with you guys. We'll go outside. Go through that door and then turn right, and I'll come with you guys right now. Uh, now let me ask the rest of the room a question before you guys can go. I'll come right now. So if you're raising your hand, you're sitting up, just go through that door. It's called limitless wealth. In a minute. Perfect. Now for the rest of you, let me ask how many of you guys would say it's a financial issue? Like I can't really travel here. I'm not sure I can afford it. If that's the issue, raise your hand. It is. If it is no problem, I'm going to work it out with you as well. You want to go? We'll work it out. We'll make it easy. Are you stretching? Or you're raising your hand. You just can't make it. That's fine. Okay. And then now the rest of you, then, if that's not the reason, then it's probably because you're skeptical. You're like, I get it. I don't want to be sold to blah, 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 blah. Okay. $350. I don't give a fuck about, especially when I sell it on this stage. Okay. And I fill up seminar spots in my seminar. I make shit. I make nothing. I literally make nothing. I, I make 20% off of what I sell in this room. Just so you guys know. So I'm doing this as a gift. All my seminars are $2,500, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 with my own audience. That's what they fucking pay. Well, dude, how much did you pay to come to my retreat? How much did you pay for your girlfriend? Same thing. <laughs> he paid for him and his girlfriend, right? Just to give us perspective. That's how much it costs to come to my seminars. I'm literally doing this because I want to help people. That's the only reason I'm doing this. So if you want to actually change your life, you want to do it for $350, come now. Last chance. I'm not going to offer this again because I really don't want to offer this again here. But if you want to do it, come outside. If not, no problem. We're going to break into an exercise. Is there anyone else who wants to do it? You do? 
All right, so you want to do it as well? You can watch it live on Zoom. So for those of you who can't make it, it's, it's going to be live on Zoom. It's going to be interacting. There's already like 70 people on Zoom, just so you know, who are coming to this event. You want to come on Zoom? Yeah? I'll meet you outside. All right. Anyone else you want to go as well? All right. Awesome. Uh, no, we can work some now. You have a month. You have a month to come up with $350. Can you make that in a month? I'm saying, but you can make it happen in a month, right? Okay, then we'll make it happen. Go. I'll help you out. I, if, if you, guys, I'm trying to fucking help you. That's literally why it's so fucking cheap. All right? I promise you. So I'll help you out if you want. But you got to commit to it. Then let's go. All right. All right, good. All right, so look, for those of you who are staying in the room, I'm, we're going to do a quick exercise. We'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, those of you online who want to come, click on the link below. If you're on Zoom and you want to come to this event or attend it live on Zoom, click this link below, fill out the application. We're going to see you guys there. Uh, there's already about 70 people coming on Zoom, so it's going to be a sick-ass party. <laughs> we'll have a pretty good party there. Um, and now, for those of you who are here, guys, click on that link. Again, if you're on Zoom, click on that. Uh, for those of you guys who are here in the room, yeah, you have a question? You want to decide later. Uh, I would say fill out your info anyways to get more info, just because, obviously, how there's no other way for me to contact you. I don't really know how to – I don't really know where to direct you. So uh, maybe – yeah, maybe, maybe go fill out your info. Say, I want to decide later. Just put it as notes on the thing. Is there anyone else who's on the fence, not sure if they can make it, and that's why they want to come? Yeah? Okay, so come, and then when you go in there, we'll also put that just so you see you're on the fence, uh, you know, on the fence because of whatever scheduling issue or something like that. We'll make it work, guys. I want to help you out for real. Okay, for those of you who are left in the room, here's the exercise. I want you guys to really ask yourself, what are three things you're going to do differently when it comes to being present, when it comes to being here on time, right? Because you want to value your time. And what I want you guys to do is give them groups of six, right? So bigger group, connect with them, be vulnerable with them, because that's going to segue into the next exercise we have later today. All right? Yes? All right, so let's break out into those rooms. I'll be back shortly, guys. And if anyone else wants to come, follow me.
Okay. Half the room disappeared, huh? They all got scared for the next part. They're like, fuck. Okay. Yeah, what's happening next? All right. Are we unmuted? Unmuted from you guys? I can't see the light. Yeah. All right. All right. So first of all, uh, welcome back from the break. Now, at a seminar I had in Chicago two years ago, called up a volunteer. And they came up and they shared a story. And he starts telling the story about how when he was eight years old, he was tubing with his older brother who was 12. And they're on this river and they're tubing. And they finish. So when you're done, what you normally do is you take this pump and you deflate the tube. So his brother takes the pump, puts it on the tube, starts to deflate the tube, and touches the pump and just falls. And he goes to his brother, he's like, hey, stop fucking with me. What are you doing? What's going on? It looks, his brother's not breathing. His brother got electrocuted to death right in front of him. And he's telling us a story. And the entire time he's telling the story, he's fake. Like, he's not emotional. He's fake crying. He's fake. And I tell him, like, you know, are you really honoring your brother by being fake? And he just starts crying. And I use that specific example to segue the rest of the room into what I think was probably one of the most impactful moments of the entire room. And it was that everyone all of a sudden became vulnerable and they connected, right? In this room, pretty much everyone's a fucking man. <laughs> now, as a man, you've been jaded, you've been hurt, you've been fucked over, you, you know, you've been, you've been through a lot, right? And we're not really vulnerable. The problem is if you can't tap into those emotions, you can't tap into extreme motivation. If you can't tap into your vulnerability, you can't tap into your confidence. True confidence is being able to tap into that vulnerability while owning it, right? While owning it. So not yet, but in a few minutes, I'm going to actually have us do an exercise. And the exercise will look a lot like this. You guys are going to sit in a group, five to 10, whatever you want. And you guys are going to be honest about it. You guys are going to be honest about what you've been through, who you are, and but fucking be vulnerable. If someone's fake, right, they're just inauthentic. You'll notice people who come off weird, okay, to you socially, it's because they're not vulnerable. It's because they have a mask on. The second the mask comes off, they're not weird anymore. They're normal because it's not normal to hide it. The reason I think a lot of people connect to me on stage is because I truly am fucking real. Like if I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling good. If I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. If I'm sad, I'm sad. If I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm real on stage. I'm always real. I hate fake. As a matter of fact, whenever I'm around people who show me the fucking uh, masks, it upsets me. I get upset at a mask. I hate masks because I feel like I'm being dece deceived. Right? I feel like someone's showing me something that's not supposed to be there. That's not you, right? It's like, I, I, it's like hey, I'm going to pretend to be something I'm not. Why not be what you are and then prove it rather than pretend to be something you're not? If you are yourself, you'll attract people who like you for you. And by the way, remember I talked about connection? How do you connect? You are yourself. If you're not yourself, you can't connect. So how many of us here have a hard time being vulnerable? <laughs> wow. It's almost a whole fucking room, right? And it's uncomfortable to be vulnerable. Why? Because we've been hurt before, right? Sometime in our life, we've been vulnerable and we were punished for it. You were punished for it by either someone you dated, you are punished for it by your friends, maybe by your family, and you felt you couldn't be vulnerable. Well, in this fucking room, I want to show you that you can be. People just have to earn it, right? And in this specific exercise, no one here is going to hurt you. No one here is going to fucking be rude to you. No one here is going to judge you because honestly, everyone's, everyone's been through something, right? Like I'm telling you right now, the only way to really fucking be happy is to be vulnerable. If you can't be vulnerable, it means you can't be yourself. And what makes people happier than anything? To be seen, to be your fucking self. If you can't be yourself, how are you going to be really happy? You can be temporarily happy. But what makes us fall in love with people? What makes us want to be around them? They see you for you. They understand you. They get you. They, they, they feel you. And if we can't understand ourselves and we can't show ourselves, how are we going to do it? Now it's hard, right? It's hard. It is hard. But that's how we do it together. And, you know, 
We'll put some music on in the background. I don't really want anyone's privacy invaded on Zoom or on whatever, the cameras. And the reason I'm doing this, I could sit here and I could speak more and I can get a bunch of content. I'm speaking again on Saturday. But I really know that this exercise alone has made such a big impact. Every time I do this at a seminar, I mean, people come to me like, dude, I, I never knew how to be myself. I never knew I could be myself. I never knew I could be accepted for being myself. And as soon as they do, they are, right? And that's what's hard is we feel like we have to be a certain person. Guys, I'm 23. I'm a fucking normal kid. There are times where I feel sad. There are times when I'm happy. But for the most part, I'm me. And I'm always going to show who I am. And I want you guys to do the same. All right, so what's that exercise look like? Well, you're going to sit around and just be honest with each other. Like, hey, I'm here. This is what I'm struggling with. Like, I remember I did this in class uh, when I was studying hypnosis. And I was 19. I mean, they asked me. They were doing this, like, diagnostic test uh, where you could find someone's problems. And they go, give us one sentence. And I said, I need to make money fast. And everyone looked at me and, like, laughed. And I didn't care. I really didn't give a fuck. The whole room laughed at me. And as we did it, right, you're supposed to go, I need to make money fast. And then it showed, I need to make money fast to help my parents and my dad and my mom not be stressed. That's what came from that, right? But when it's just a sentence, people made fun of me. Similarly, people can't see through you. Not every, no one knows you as well as you know you. Nobody. And no one will know you if you can't show them who you are. So being vulnerable is how when, when does a man or a woman fall in love with someone else? It's not in a moment of weakness, right? It's not in a moment of, hey, I'm crying or I'm upset because I want a, affection or love. It's in a moment of vulnerability where you put your wall down and you say, you know what? Whatever fucking happens, happens. That's when people fall in love. And when you have the confidence to be vulnerable, because you know regardless if someone hurts you, you'll still be able to come back into this spot, into this place, that's when you become vulnerability is power. Vulnerability is connection. Vulnerability is happiness. You have to learn how to be vulnerable. So we're going to find groups. How big of a group would you guys like to do this in? Five. Fives? Okay, fives are fair. So we'll do it in groups of five. All right? Groups of five. You guys are going to get in the group, and this is going to change your life. 20 minutes, you sit around a group, and you fucking be vulnerable. Be open with the people around you. Show them, hey, look, this is why I'm fucking here. This is why I came to change. This is what I want to work on. This is what I want in my life. Maybe I didn't believe in myself. And you guys can support each other, you know? Like, listen to them. It's not some fake group where you're like, I've, I've heard you. No, it's not I've heard you. It's, guys, be real. Respond authentically. Respond being yourself. I hate fake stuff. I hate people who go on like, yeah, everything's fine. Be real. Be real. Support each other. Be real. And you'll notice how much better you feel. You notice this like stress that weight on a lot of your shoulders that you didn't even know you had just disappear. Okay? So I'll give you guys, honestly, I'll give you 20 minutes. If we need more, we'll, we'll take more time because I think it's really important. Okay? Any questions? Is there anyone who doesn't want to do this for whatever reason? You don't want to do it? Guys, make sure he does it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll help you. You don't have to do it. But you should do it. Up to you, really. You know, but I, I recommend you do it. All right? So I'll give you guys 20 minutes and go for it. All right?
Let's go, let's go, let's go. Guys, we're getting right back. First of all, how did you guys like that? Did it help? How much closer do you feel to the people around you? A lot, right? And you guys feel better, more comfortable, happier? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. See? When you can be yourself, it feels fucking good. All right. So, are we good? Nima? Are we unmuted, everybody? Yeah? Unmuted? Okay. Guys, so first of all, right now I want to talk about something that I know has absolutely had the biggest impact on my life. It has allowed me to become who I am. It's going to allow you to become who you are about to become. And really, it's one word. It comes from one word, confidence. But what is confidence? What is the ability to drive this insatiable hunger inside of me? What, what is this belief I have that no matter what, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to accomplish what I want. No matter what's happening in my life, where does it come from? And that's what I want to give you guys today. I want to give you guys this crazy amount of certainty that you can achieve what you want rather than this ridiculous amount of certainty that you can achieve what you don't want. Are we ready? Say yes. Yes. Good. So how do you become more confident? Well, this is a question that plagued me because I realized when I was younger, I said, well, why is confidence important? I didn't even, it never even crossed my mind. And I remember I was in love with this girl and I lost all this weight, 24 pounds in one month. And I was going to ask her out on a Thursday. And on Wednesday, some guy who was way fatter than I was even when I started asked her out and she said yes. And I go, huh? <laughs> well, I guess it's not about the weight or how I look, is it? And I started to ask myself, what was it that he had that I didn't have? What was it not just about him? What was it about all my other friends who weren't getting women or weren't successful in dating, but the ones who were? What was it about them? And I realized, oh, it's confidence. And as I got older and I started getting into business, I looked at the people who were making a lot of money versus the people who weren't. And I said, wow, the ones who are making a lot of money have a lot more confidence in this area versus other people who aren't. And then I started to ask myself, well, what about the ones who are really healthy? I'm like, well, they're really confident in the gym. They're confident that they could follow the diet. They're comfortable with this routine. And this is when it all came together for me. The foundation of success in any area comes from one thing, your self-belief, your confidence in the thing that you set your mind to. How much do you believe that you'll get the thing you want? How much do you believe that you're going to go for it without any hesitation? How much do you believe that you're going to take action when the opportunity arises regardless because you know if it's not this one, it's the next one? Most people are scared to fail because they believe they're going to fail. Most people are scared of rejection because they believe they deserve to be rejected. If you believe you're going to win, you will get rejected a thousand times just to get the one yes. If you believe you're going to succeed, you will put in the work. Because you know you're going to get the outcome. Client. And this client literally had all the money in the world. Parents, super wealthy. But this client didn't believe that they could actually get the things they wanted. So I remember he came in, he came in my office and he goes, Marcel, look, man, I'm just here because my parents made me come here. You know, I don't even want to be here. And I said, okay, so what do you want to do? You want to just hang out for an hour? He said, yeah, we can hang out. So he starts talking to me and he's telling me, you know, I know my life. You know, people think money makes you happy and all these things make you happy, but eh, it doesn't make me happy. You know, I, I'm just lonely. No one really likes me for me and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, honestly, I don't even like you. <laughs> and, and he looks at me and goes, excuse me? I said, why would I like you? You're miserable. You're unhappy. You're ungrateful. You just look at all the things that are miserable in your life. Who the fuck would I, who the fuck would like you? I said, and I stood up and I got in his face. I said, why would I like you? And he looks at me and he's like, whoa, chill. I'm like, no, no, you fucking chill. Now, let's start over. And I come back and I said, now tell me how your life is. And he goes, honestly, <laughs> he's like, oh, it's fucking, you shocked me. I said, I know it did. Anyways, by the end of this hour long conversation, he's laughing, I'm laughing, we're cracking jokes. His parents call me, guy's 15. His parents call me and she goes, listen, I don't know what you did to my son, but my son, for the first time, 
just called a girl that he liked and he asked her out. She calls me again 30 minutes later. She's like, I don't know what you did to my son, but he just called another girl that he used to like and he asked her out and she also said yes. And I said, cool. And she calls me like two hours later. She's like, I don't know what you did to my son. But my son just wrote an entire script and it's really good. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? You know, I'm like, she must be trolling me, you know, or he's lying to her and making fun of everything. So she's like, can I have him come in in two days? I said, yeah, sure. So she calls me two days later before he comes in. And she's like, my son just won the talent show because he's going to come in in the evening. So what do you mean he won the talent show? She goes, yeah. He went to the principal or whatever, charmed his way into the talent show, flipped the water bottle and won. And I said, interesting. So this guy's just trolling the whole world now, right? He comes in my office and he's smiling. He's like, Marcel, thanks so much. You changed my life. I said, how did I change your life? He goes, I don't know. I guess no one ever told me that I'm not likable. And I said, really? He's like, yeah. And I said, huh? He's like, so I made myself more confident and I realized I should behave better and now people like me. So what was the whole point of the story? Well, quite simply, it's so fucking easy to make a change. He made one change and he became confident. Now, for some people, confidence takes a long time. For others, it happens in an instant. For me, it happened in a moment. I went up to two girls that I thought were really pretty after eight hours in the mall, shaking, almost throwing up, feeling nauseous. I finally go up to this girl. I'm like, hey, I think you're really pretty. Can I get your number? She laughs at me. Her two girlfriends laugh at me and they walk away. And I sat there and I'm like, well, stood there and I'm like, damn, that didn't, that didn't really suck. Is that an appropriate reaction? No. Her loss. I see this other girl. I'm 15. I have braces on. I'm skinny. I have some weird buzz cut. I look like a weirdo. I go up to this girl who's like in line. She looks like a gazillia, but like really pretty uh, for coffee bean. And I go, I go, Hey, uh, what's your name? She tells me, name. I'm like, cool. What's your number? This has been the best pickup line I've ever used. And she tells me, you know, she's like, Oh, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, so what is it? <laughs> she gives me her number and I go, well, this is an addicting feeling. So I come back to the mall every day for the next three months. And I do this all fucking day long until I became so confident. I didn't care. And then now you have to go up to random people and start hypnotizing them. That's another level of confidence. Then you go on stage and you start doing things in front of people. It's another level of confidence. Until my self-belief became so crazy that regardless of what happens around me, I am confident. Now, how can I give you that confidence? How can I transfer that over to you right now? How can I make you understand what confidence really is? And I had to simplify the word confidence. Because for so long, I asked myself, I would work with someone like, you're confident. Like, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. And it fucking hit me. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. He is confident that he's not. <laughs> and I go, ah, there is no such thing as confidence. There's such thing as what am I confident in? So in order to transfer positive amounts of confidence to you towards your goals, I have to first make you understand that everybody here has a core sense of confidence. But what have you been molded into believing? What kind of confidence? When we say confidence in a generic term, we tend to see someone who's outgoing, who's fearless, who tends to be successful, who tends to be out there, charming. Well, that's because that person's confident in what? In the fact that people like them. Being confident that others will like you regardless if they do or they don't, that's the kind of confidence we have to become familiar with. So I focus on all my close friends that love me, all the people around me that care about me, my family, whereas most people focus on what? They focus on the opposite. They focus on the fact that people don't care, that people may not enjoy them. And they have this pattern of focus where they say, oh no, I'm not going to get the things I want because I'm more certain that I'm going to fail because I'm not good enough. I'm not attractive enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not powerful enough. I'm not whatever enough. And therefore that's my reality. So why, was, why is confidence important in the first place? Besides the fact that we know it makes you take action, it makes you go for what you want, makes you take advantage of opportunities, makes you feel better, makes you happier, gives you more freedom, right? Makes you stand out in a room, makes you literally probably the most attractive person in the room if you're the most confident person, makes people want to be around you. Why else is confidence important? Well, it's also important because it allows you to enjoy your life. It allows you to be happier, right? But I want to get to a specific point as to why confidence is so important. It's important because if you don't have it, you'll die never reaching what you want. If you don't have confidence in what you want, you will never ever get what you want. I do not care what people tell you because most people like to help support you. No man, you could do it. You'll get there one day. Ah, it's fine, it's not realistic. So if I tell you, hey, that's not realistic and you are confident you're gonna fail, does that belief make sense? Yes, does it make sense? Yes. 
But if you believe that no matter what happens, you're going to actually reach the highest levels, someone tells you it's not realistic, does that belief even enter your mind? No. So how can we make a change here? What is the core secret to becoming more confident? Getting comfortable, because that's all confidence is, or familiar, if you want to use that word, with the other belief system. Getting confident equals being comfortable with the things you want. I'm comfortable with myself. So how do I become comfortable? Well, if I'm insecure about rejection and I go get rejected in front of everybody, my brain realizes that's not that big a deal. If I'm insecure that I'm not good enough, I'm not tall enough, you know, my dick's small, and I tell everyone, it's not an insecurity anymore, is it? It's not a secret. You can't be insecure about something that everybody knows. I'm insecure that I'm short. How? Everyone knows you're short. <laughs> How are you insecure about it? I'm insecure I'm ugly. It's in front of their face. What are you hiding? <laughs> what, you're not familiar with the fact that you're ugly? <laughs> Just date someone who uses glasses and tell them not to wear their glasses. You're fine. Problem solved. Come on. Right? Point is, is to be confident, you have to own who you are. Studies show, and this is a fact, studies show that people who are confident, okay, at least Primates who are confident have two to three times more testosterone than the rest of the tribe. They have two to three times more oxytocin than the rest of the tribe. They also have two to three times more energy. Their quality of sleep is significantly higher. Their stress levels are significantly lower. Why? Because they're comfortable with their life. They're happy. They're content. If you feel insecure or you feel jealous or you feel envy, that means in your mind you believe someone has something you can never have. Jealousy is not a representation of somebody else. It's a representation of what you believe you don't have. If I believe I can't get something someone else got, or I can't have something someone else has, I'm jealous. And that jealousy is a representation of my insecurity. Insecurity is a lack of belief that I can have what I want. Here's another way to look at confidence. How do I know if I'm not confident? If I tell you, hey, shoot for the moon, and you go, it's unrealistic, you're not confident in shooting for the moon. If I tell you, hey, think bigger, and you go, that's not realistic. If I tell you, hey, it's easy to do it in a short amount of time, go up to this person, go have a conversation, and you can't do it. It's because you're not confident. So let's take this word out of it for, for a second. Let's take confidence out of the equation. What is the benefit to having confidence? Well, if I'm going to change your life, right? If I look at someone and I want to hypnotize them, or I want to help them, or I want to motivate them, or I want to move them, or I want to inspire them, or I go into a meeting and I have an investor in front of me, and I look at him and I say, hey, invest in, invest in me. I'm, gonna, I'm going to make you your money back. Invest in me. Or I go over here and I go, yeah, I mean, maybe you might lose most of your money. It's up to you. Do you like it? Who the fuck is going to buy that? <laughs> Who's going to buy that? But if you look over here and you're like, holy shit, buy this right now, and you're 100% congruent with that, who would not want to buy it? Everyone's going to buy it. Does this make sense? Say yes. So the biggest thing that I think stifles people is that they don't believe that they could believe in what they want. You literally don't believe that you could believe that you could have what you want. You believe that you believe that you can't have what you want. Now that sounds complicated, so I make it super easy. You just don't fucking believe you get what you want. Which means what? It means you believe you get what you don't want. There's no such thing as I don't believe in that. I'm a skeptic. You're what? You're skeptical that you can't do it? <laughs> You're skeptical that you can't get results? Nonsense. Nonsense! I talked about this earlier. There's cancer that spreads. It spreads amongst people. It's like a fucking disease. It tells you you can't do it. Your dreams just disappear. But when we're younger, like I said earlier, we imagine ourselves being rock stars, celebrities, athletes in the NBA. You think big. And then everyone just keeps beating you down and they fucking beat you down and they beat you down. And eventually you're like, I'll just go to college, get a degree. I'm a college fucking dropout. I dropped out of college at 19. My sister is still in law school. She went that route. She hates it every day. She's like, I hate school. I hate this. I, uh. She's like, well, Marcel, should I be a lawyer? Like, should I be a lawyer? I'm like, Dude, you're almost done at this point. Just fucking do it, you know? Hell, I told her, I would, if I were you, I would have just partnered up with a lawyer had, and then just started a law firm with them. And I would have done shit. Like, that's what I would do. And I'd be a fucking, I'd have a law firm at 18. 
That's what I would have done if I wanted to go that route. Why would I go to law school myself? Well, I guess the advantage is now I have an in-house family lawyer. But still, you know, the point is, is people like to beat around the bush. Why waste all this fucking time? Because you're not confident. You want more money quickly? You need more confidence. You want to have the relationship you want? You need more confidence. If you want to actually get results, you need more confidence. What do confident people do? They take advantage of opportunities that are right in front of them. They go for it without hesitation. They're decisive. They make decisions. They do it. They commit. If you can't commit, it's because you don't believe you're going to get the result. If everyone here knew they would get a result if they took a certain action, would they commit? But you don't believe in it. Why? Because you don't believe in yourself. Because of fear. What is fear? Fear is a belief that you can't have what you want. Fear is a belief that you believe in the thing that you don't want more than the thing you do. And it's a stupid fucking thought. It's a fucking thought that kills your dreams. It's a fucking thought that stops you from going to the next level. We all know what stops us. It's fear. But it's that moment of fear where you act. It's that moment of fear where you tell your brain, no! You go for it and you don't think twice. You go for it and you don't stop. You keep momentum. Fear is your dream killer. Fear is the cancer. Your fear is the illusion that you are not good enough. So what is confidence? Confidence is knowing what not to fear. Confidence is taking action even when your brain tries to trick you and tell you that the floor is lava. How many of us understand that you really do have a lot of potential? Like the thing sitting in between your ears is a supercomputer. Do we understand that? I'll tell you, your brain can process 50 million bits of information every second. 50 million. You can only consciously process 150 bits. It's a million times more powerful than what we're aware of even. And if you program that part of the brain to go for what you want, anything is possible. I remember the moment this changed for me. I remember the exact moment it changed for me. I was sitting down, and I'll give you guys a very similar example. Anyone here ever play basketball or type on a keyboard? Anyone remember the moment where all of a sudden it feels natural to play basketball or it feels natural to type or when you're driving, it just clicks for you and you could drive? Whereas the first time I get in the car to drive, I'm holding the wheel, I'm nervous, my heart's racing, I, I'm like squeezing the wheel like this. I can't open the window, I can't touch the radio, I'm, I'm like thinking gas brake, gas brake, uh, uh, steering, uh, blinker, I can't, it's too much. And then it became a pattern unconsciously and now I could drive, I could text, I could go do whatever I want, you know, like a freaking Formula One driver. Well, it became unconscious. What if you could unconsciously make money? What if you could unconsciously become confident? What if you could unconsciously <laughs> attract everyone to you, to where people just want to be around you? They want to listen to you. They pay attention to each and every word. They're waiting for the next word to come off your tongue. What is it about language and belief and confidence that creates that attraction to somebody? I'll tell you. It's in your fucking DNA. Every single person wants it. But not everyone knows how to get it. And that is where fear comes in. Fear is the barrier between you and what you want. Fear is the barrier that you need to get out of the way and move it. You take your fucking fear and you walk through it. And now you're confident. You're confident. You make decisions. You take action. And the only thing that was in your way this entire time was a thought. I want you guys really quick to think about that. I know for a fact, for example, the seminar that I offered you guys earlier. Anyone who comes to that would 100% make their money back. It's 350 pathetic dollars. Nothing. But most of the room was scared. I have, this, I have this commitment. I have that commitment. The fact that you can't make it to that shows me that you haven't had the freedom. Or you don't believe it's going to get you the result. Or you don't believe you're going to get the outcome you want because of fear. Doubt. I've never seen this guy before. I've never heard this guy before. Now, a lot of the room, most of the room actually signed up, ironically. But there is that fear. And that fear made you miss the opportunity because everyone who didn't do it cannot come anymore. I'm not selling it here anymore. So even if you wanted to come now, you can't come unless you went out earlier. 
But that's an opportunity that I know for a fact would have changed your life. And I didn't sit here convincing you to do it because I lose money on every chair I sell for 350. I actually lose money on those chairs because I can't fill it for my own clients, for my own side, for my own people to make it happen. I'm losing money, but out of generosity, I said, I'll do it. But here's the, here's the catch. How many other opportunities do people sleep on? Forget me. For those of you who even took action with me, how many opportunities are you missing out on? How many opportunities are you not taking action on? Because you're not confident you'll get the result. Confidence cannot be faked. Real confidence cannot be faked. There is something different about someone who's confident versus someone who isn't. It's real. How many of us know someone who's fake confident, but it's, it's, they're probably insecure as fuck. They're like act tougher than they are and they, and they try to bully people. How many of us know that? I've seen that. I hate that. But that's the type of person that collapses when real confidence comes in. I want you guys to see how confident you really can be and how quickly you'll do it. Quickly think about your biggest fear socially, whether it's rejection, it's failure. What are, what's your biggest insecurity that people will do? That they'll, they'll reject you. They won't want you around them. You'll lose all your friends. What is the biggest insecurity? Think about it. When you have it, raise your hand. I'm not going to call on you. I just want to know when everyone has it. Just raise your hand. Okay. That's the fucking thought. That thought. Put your hands down. That's the thought that kills your confidence. A thought. Some words you tell yourself that then create an image in the mind, that then destroy you. They destroy your dreams, destroys your future, destroys everything. I think it's kind of funny <laughs> that a fucking thought, a thought destroys everything you want. Oh, you don't have the money you want? For fucking thinking, thinking the wrong way. You don't have the love of your life in your life. You don't have abundance in that area. You don't have a six pack because you didn't think about it the right way. So here's the cool thing. Cool thing is, there are two ways to change this. Way number one, become aware, practice, habitual action over and over again until it becomes part of you. Weeks, months, consistency, no matter what, you create a routine, you go for it. And I know a lot of people do this and they get results. Some people give up before they get into that place, but if you stay consistent, you'll get the result. Now here's the hack. Right? How many of us want the shortcut? Raise your hand. Say yes, I want the shortcut. Yes, I want the shortcut. So here's the shortcut. Hypnosis. Hypnosis is the shortcut. Why did I study hypnosis? Because there's two parts of the mind. You have your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. You've been programmed to have positive associations and negative ones. If you associate negative things to money, to confidence, to the things you want, fear, to the things that you want. If your brain has been programmed to be scared of the things that you want, money is the root of all evil. Money is not good for you. You'll have no freedom with money. All of these thoughts. Will you ever fucking get it? Going to the gym is hard. Making money is hard. If you believe that, what happens? You never get it. What hypnosis allows you to do, and this is what happened to you when you were a kid, Someone went into your mind and molded these associations, put them in there, planted these seeds and these thoughts that sprouted into who you are now. And now you have a filter that doesn't really allow you to change. So here's your conscious mind, here's your subconscious mind, and here's the thing that gets in the way to protect what you know. Because what you know has allowed you to survive. It has allowed you to live up until this moment. And that is your comfort zone, surviving. Not living, not thriving, surviving. Well, my life is good, Marcel. You're still surviving if you're not where you want to be. If you fucking think big, you realize you're in survival. So how do you change this? Habitually, you take action over and over and over again. Eventually, this will rewire itself. Or the same way it was programmed. You see, from age zero to eight, your brain is in theta. Theta is a brainwave state. Theta is hypnosis. So our brains were programmed in hypnosis. For those of you who don't believe in it, what a bunch of nonsense. Everyone here has been in hypnosis and you're in it 24 fucking 7. Because your brain goes in and out of this state when you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you daydream. You're in trance. 
But you're not in the same trance that allowed you to change. You see, most people are in beta right now, right? As an adult, you go into beta. You can't change in beta. How are you going to make a change in a different state than you were programmed? If this is the state we were programmed in, we need to go back here. And that's what hypnosis is. Hypnosis lets you go in here, tap into theta, and bam, instantaneously make the fucking change. Instantly make the change. And that's the shortcut. Fuck habits for years. Fuck that. I have people with addictions that come up on this stage 50 years smoking, 30 seconds permanently gone. 32 year olds who have been stuttering since they were three years old, 60 seconds, it's fucking gone from the learned behavior. Lack of confidence their whole life in themselves, instantly gone. That's what hypnosis does. That's what confidence does. And the fact that I know how to do it better than anyone else in the world is a testament to one thing. Change happens right now. Change happens in this moment, and you don't have to wait decades to make the change. You don't have to wait months or weeks, because what's the most valuable thing in the world? Time. And we only have so much time. And every day we sit there letting our fears dictate our time, dictate how, how we spend our time, rather than growing and taking the shortcut. My favorite memory in my entire life was in the Maldives in September of 2020. I'm in the Maldives. I'm sitting there. I'm alone. I'm in this villa. I, a client, I pretty much did a one-on-one -on -one retreat with him. And this trip cost over half a million dollars. I'm including what he paid me, okay? It's a $50,000 a night villa. We're in the most expensive resort in the entire Maldives. And we were in the most expensive villa there. It's called Soneva Jan. And I'm sitting in the villa alone. And I'm on this net outside of my room overlooking the water. And I'm seeing the sun. It's super high up. And I get lost in my thoughts. And I'm just feeling emotional. So much gratitude for the fact that I have the opportunity to be on such a beautiful place at 22. I would not be able at the time to have afforded that trip myself. So I made it happen somehow. I really, I mean, I just wanted to do it. I made it happen. And I'm there and I'm alone. No one was around me. I was alone. And this is why it was so memorable. I thought about everything I had been through, all the pain, all the suffering. And every time I, I overcame a fear that led me to that moment right there where I was in the most peaceful place I've ever been in. And I was just, four hours went by and I felt just nothing but love. And by the time the sun started to set and I realized that I was sitting there for four hours and I had like the net in my skin because I was sitting on it for so long, the biggest breakthrough I ever had in my life popped up in my head. I'm going to show everyone I ever meet, everyone I ever speak to, that they can do anything they fucking want. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make you believe it. Because the belief I have is that if I commit to getting what I want, I will. And the only reason someone doesn't commit is because they deep down don't believe in themselves. And because they let the fear dictate their decisions. And if fear dictates your decisions, and this is the saddest part, you never get what you fucking want. If fear dictates your decisions, you will never get what you want. For those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely should. My Instagram's at Marcel. And my YouTube is Marcel Klein. <laughs> Subscribe if you're not. <laughs> you should definitely do that. But how many of us agree that confidence, certainty, commitment are the most important things in our lives? Raise your hand. Now, on Saturday, I'm speaking here. Who's going to be here on Saturday? Okay. On Saturday, I'm going to hypnotize the entire room. And I'm going to give you this fucking confidence. I'm going to install it into your fucking veins but you fucking show up and you go all in. Because when I come here, I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to give you my heart and my fucking soul because this is the thing that's changed my life. You know, everyone, I remember I had a coach. He was the athletic director of my, my, my first high school before I transferred to my next one. And he told me, you're not good at sports. You'll never make it to the JV team of a real school. And I pretty much said, fuck you, right? And I left the school and I tried out for football, for track, for volleyball for basketball, and I made it to varsity on every fucking sport. Not only did I make it to varsity, I ended up winning a fucking championship the same fucking year I left, and I was MVP of every tournament we did, and I come back with the ring, and I'm like, hey, where's your ring, bitch? <laughs> you know, pretty much. 
and you could just see the envy. But imagine I'd listen to him, right? Most time we get coaches or other people who we look up to and they tell us we can't do it. I'm the last guy that'll tell you you can't fucking do it. You not only can, you should. And you will if you commit. So this leads me to my next exercise with you guys. I pretty much want you guys to fucking get in a group of four and you look the other person in the eyes with 100% fucking confidence. Remember the goals we wrote down earlier? And you're going to tell them, this is what my life is going to look like. And you're going to tell them the fucking date. And then you guys will sit down for 10 minutes and you're going to figure out what the first step is after the seminar. Tonight, what is the first step? What are you taking? What step are you taking tonight? And it's not, I'm going to go learn how to market a little bit. I'm going to learn a little bit of this. No, no. What is the first step I'm going to do? I'm going to find someone to hire. I'm going to find where my clients are. I'm going to fucking figure out exactly what my business is, how I'm going to start this LLC or S Corp, whatever it is. A step that's going to make your business reality. Something that commits you to your future. For those of you who signed up to the seminar, well, you've already done that. For those of you who signed up, you've already done that. But for those of you who haven't, or you, even if you have, what is the next step I need to take today once I leave the seminar that commits me to my future? Do we understand this? Say yes. yes. Now, think about it. You leave here. Everyone came here because they wanted results, right? Yes? Yes? yes. 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 If we want results, we got to take action. Action produces results. Not sitting there saying one day. No, today, now. So right now, I'm giving you guys the opportunity to do it. Because in this state, knowing what you're knowing, feeling what you're feeling around the people that are going to do the same exact fucking thing, now's the time to do it. Is there anybody else? I'll give you a last opportunity. Anybody else who's not coming to the seminar who wants to come to the seminar, seminar, raise your hand. Okay. For those of you who are raising your hand, meet me out there. Well, Jack, raise your hand. Okay. And by the way, you guys better do the exercise right after that. Okay. I'll give you guys 10 minutes to do this exercise. 10 minutes. All right. Any questions? Let's go. Come on. You guys, let's go. It's almost over. I would stay till the end. I'm almost done. 10 minutes. Yeah. Come. You want to come?
All right, I know you guys have been here all day. So here's the thing. I think Owen is in the building now. I'm not sure if he's going to hop up. He may not. He may want to rest his voice till tomorrow because I know he's speaking tomorrow. I'm going to go for another five, 10 minutes. And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to answer some questions. All right. So some Q&A, any questions people have, I'd like to do it. And why? I love Q&As because just, I just throw the answers out. It's common sense. It's quick. It shows you how to actually answer your own questions, right, and make things super simple. So I will repeat the question so everyone on Zoom can hear it. And uh, that's why it will sound like I'm repetitive. I'll also repeat it so everyone on YouTube can hear it. All right. So for now, we'll do a quick Q&A. First hand I saw. Go ahead. So when it came to, like, someone uh, having a simple problem or, like, when you first started, um, and there was that big way that was just like, how, how is it that you got to that mindset of you can have a shortcut or you can make the, the yeah. simple? So he's asking, look, when I first started, how did I get to the mindset where there was a shortcut or a simple solution to the obstacles that I faced? Correct? And that's a very easy answer. I just looked for them. Most people don't look for them. They're like, oh, there's no shortcut. I just have to do it this way. But what if you sat there and said, how can I do more in less time? How can I do more in less time? Is there another way? Is there a faster way? What is it? What is it? Think about it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Bam, answer. And then try it. Pops up in your head. Let me try this. Didn't work. Try this. Doesn't work. Try that. Right? And you'll find that oftentimes the shortcut comes from delegating. How can I make someone else do it for me? Okay. I can't afford that person. Can I get an intern and then make the money so I can pay the intern? <laughs> right? Simple things like that. Another question. Yeah. Probably that for, for God is, but before you made a list of one goal, two strategies. Yes. Three. So the third one is flexibility. Yeah. So he asked earlier, I made a list, one goal, two strategy, three flexibility. Flexibility means, hey, this isn't working. Change it. Like I just said here. Right? There was a question here. Yeah. Yeah. How to prioritize opportunities. You have so many opportunities that you need to take action on. Well, to be honest, I think that's a lack of clarity on what you want, right? Like if you knew exactly what you wanted, you'd know which one you'd go for. For example, uh, and this is kind of funny, but I was walking at the mall yesterday and there was one really pretty girl and then there was another really pretty girl. And I'm like, fuck, which one do I talk to? And then I didn't talk to either of them because I was about to talk to this one. And then as I'm thinking about that one, I'm like, wait, that one's, uh, I lost both opportunities, right? So I just had no clarity on what I wanted there. So that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you want more money? Uh, yeah, but I feel like I wouldn't be comfortable with, like, well, any way to make money. You know? No, I mean, but do you want more money? I'm not saying how. You're focused on the how. Yeah, yeah. It says how do you get clarity on what you want. You would. You want more money, right? Yeah. Do you want better relationships? Yeah. You want to be healthier, look better? Yeah. Okay, you know what you want. You just don't know how you're going to get it. That's the difference. You know what you want, but because you don't know how you're going to get there, you don't believe it. So if you believe that that's what I want, now you got to sit there and go, okay, how am I going to get it? I'm not going to be comfortable going and working a 40-hour-a-week job that I don't like. I'll do my job 60 hours a week. I actually do that. More. I work 60, 70 hours a week sometimes. But I love it. So you know what you want. You just don't necessarily believe you can get it. Make sense? Does it? Yeah, because your lack of confidence makes it so you need to be specific. You don't need to get specific. You get specific once you get, once you can see the big picture, then you get specific. But you're getting specific before you see the big picture, which means you're not going to go anywhere. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I'm just, it's, it's like, oh, because I don't believe I can get it, I'm just not going to think about it. I, I don't have the strategy. I'm not going to do it. Strategy comes. Remember I told you, see what you want, feel like you're there. The feeling will create motivation to take action and the action will help you find the solutions and the strategies. Yeah. Okay. Here, come here. Come, come hand this mic around to everyone who wants a question. That way everyone can hear you guys on Zoom and on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's live. There's like 200 people in there. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I just say, yeah. Well, no, I mean, finish what you were saying, and then we'll pass it on to the next question. That's it? I just, can you hear me? I don't hear myself. Well, he's going to turn it on. But yeah, pretty much he's saying he's winging it. Guys, just so you know, every seminar I've ever had in my life, other than my like very, very like high-end events, so, like my events, there you go. I've won I winged it. Winging. Yeah, there you go. No, no, he, who has it here? Good. Who has the next question? Okay, here, can you hand him the mic? 
Thanks. You're good. Give him a round of applause, guys. Thank you. What's your question? How do you personally define hypnosis? Hypnosis is going from one belief system into another belief system. I believe this is what I think my life should look like, who I am, my reality, what I'm capable of. 